The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, you know, makes Philadelphia brand cream cheese. The cream cheese that's been famous for quality since 1880. Delicious, creamy white Philadelphia brand is so popular, it outsells all other brands of cream cheese combined. Enjoy it often. Just be sure you get genuine Philadelphia brand when you buy. Look for the red Kraft K on the silvery package. Remember, there's only one Philadelphia brand cream cheese, and it's made by Kraft and guaranteed fresh. Well, one of life's most exciting adventures is being experienced by the great Gildersleeve's niece Marjorie and her husband Bronco. They bought a lot and are going to build a house and they're quite happy about it. The great Gildersleeve is happy, too, because they're building on the lot next door to him. Good morning, Bertie. Morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Where is everybody? I'm ready for breakfast. I can't get nobody around here interested in breakfast. Well, I'm here. Yes, sir. I can set my clock by you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You and the eggs are always ready at the same time. <laughs> well, you know. But you think I can get Mr. Bronco and Miss Marjorie to eat this morning? I'll answer that. No, sir. What are they doing? Same thing they've been doing ever since they decided to build a house. They're in that sprawl on the living room floor, thumbing through home magazines, looking at pictures and making figures. Well, I'll go get them to the table, Bertie. Yes, sir. The way they're neglecting food, I bet they forget to put in a kitchen. Yeah, this is a big thing to them. Hello, kitties. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Anki. Yeah, I see you're down on the floor. You must be working on your floor plan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not exactly. We're trying to decide how we can best utilize our lot. A bronco sketching where the house will be. Is that a house? Looks more like a box kite. It's uh, just rough, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, they'll smooth out. He let's everybody go into breakfast. Bertie's waiting. Well, we have a little problem, Unky. Oh? You see, we want the house about here. And the driveway will have to go here. So I'm afraid we'll have to lose our big oak tree. Yeah. Let me get down on the floor. Take a look at that. Breakfast! You coming, Bertie? <laughs> yeah, let's see now. Just so I know what's what, why don't we label these things? Oh, all right. Uh, H is for house. Yeah. Uh, D is the driveway. Mm -hmm. T, that's the tree. And I'll put G right here at the front door. G? What's that for? That's you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You just came to visit us. <laughs> well, thank you for the invitation. <laughs> You're all right, Bertie, all right. Say, this tree is a problem, isn't it? It's going to be hard to save. Hi, everybody. Hello, Leroy. Hey, isn't anybody eating breakfast? Well, of course, Leroy. What are you doing, eating on the floor? <laughs> no, my boy, we're having a family conference. Yeah, well, let's have a conference at the breakfast table. I can think better while I'm eating. Excuse me, I know nobody cares, but breakfast is getting colder by the minute. I care, let's eat. Yeah, we're trying to see where the house should go, Bertie. I thought it was going next door. If we set the house back beyond the tree, Marge, you won't have any backyard at all. Oh, and it's such a beautiful oak. We have to have a backyard for the twins or they'll be playing out in the street. Well, you wouldn't want that. No, sir. No, I guess the tree just has to go. Okay, it has to go. Let's see. <laughs> Which tree is that? Yeah, the big one in the middle of the lot there. Well, let Bertie see that. Bertie, did you say breakfast is ready? I don't know how a builder ever makes heads or tails out of something like this. Well, these are just rough sketches, Bertie. Just a minute, Leroy. Bronco, what do you suppose it'll cost to remove the tree? Plenty. Oh, when I think about what it'll cost before we even get started, it scares me. Well, maybe you'd feel better if you ate something. <laughs> um, do you think we'll ever be able to manage it? No, Marjorie, don't worry. You'll have problems, but we'll work them out. Well, problems always seem smaller after you eat. Bertie! Leroy, we got to work these plans out. Oh, for corn's sake. I gotta break this up. My golly, we put so much in the lot, I hate to spend the money to have the tree taken out right now. Well, perhaps you could... <laughs> Coming, Bertie. Yeah, I mean, Leroy. <laughs> well, 
before I go to the office, let's take a look at this tree, Leroy. Pretty big tree, Unc. Yeah. I'm afraid it'll cost Marjorie and Bronco quite a bit to get rid of it. You poor kids. If it was me, I'd build a house in the tree. <laughs> Leroy, you can't ask nine-month-old twins to climb up a rope ladder. We're not raising Tarzans, you know. Hey, Unc, there's Mr. Bullard standing on his porch looking at you. You? Oh? Let him look. I'm not doing anything. Hey, he's coming across the street. Hey, what a neighbor. You wonder what he's coming over to complain about this time. He probably wants to tell us where to put the house. Well, by George, we'll make decisions on our side of the street, and I'll tell him that. Oh, boy, this is going to be good. What do you want, Bullard? Uh, good morning, Gildersleeve. Good morning. Oh, yes, good morning. Good morning, Leroy. Hi. Get him. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what he's after. I understand Marjorie and her husband are planning to build right away, Gildersleeve. Yes, indeed. I was just trying to decide what to do about this old oak tree. Oh, yes. You know, I remember playing under this tree as a boy. Little Amy Sue and I. Amy Sue? Amy Sue Weatherby. One of my many boyhood sweethearts. Egotist. I have some very romantic memories about this tree. <laughs> yes. yeah, I know what he's after. He doesn't want us to cut it down. Uh, what do you propose to do about the tree, Gildersleeve? Well, Mr. Bullard, this may come as a shock to you, but I'm having it taken out. You are? Sorry. I'm not. I'm delighted. Hey. I thought because of Amy Sue... Oh, that's all past, Gildersleeve. I'll be glad to see it out. It obstructs my view, and every autumn the leaves blow over on my lawn. I hate other people's leaves. Well, personally, I like leaves. I don't. As a matter of fact, I came over prepared to pay for having this tree removed. You did? But since you're taking care of the job, Gildersleeve, I can save my money. Money? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Bullard. All we've done so far is just talk about removing the tree. I thought it was all settled. Leroy. <laughs> it isn't settled. The more I look at this towering oak with all those big leaves, the more I think we should keep it. I get it, Unc. Now, Gildersleeve, there's a little... And the bigger it gets, the more leaves it'll drop. You bet. It's a valuable addition to the property. Worth money. Oh, stop it, Gildersleeve. I'll make out a check. Oh, I wasn't hitting, Mr. Bullard. How much do you think it would cost to remove it? Twenty dollars? Well, I guess it'd come closer to fifty dollars. Nonsense. How about twenty-five? Uh, when you stand back and see how tall it is, it could run fifty-five dollars. <laughs> Gildersleeve, thirty dollars. And then they'll have to dig out the stump. No... Yeah, I doubt if they could do it for a penny less than $60. 35 Yeah, Then you have to saw up all the wood and haul it away. $65. Yeah, that's right, at least $65. I'll give you $40. I'll take it. What a character. <laughs> well, it's been a good day. Hey, glad I cashed Bullard's check. He might change his mind and try to back out of the deal. Gildersleeve, you know, you're quite a manipulator. Bertie. Are you Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, Marjorie and Bronco home? Not yet. Hey, look what I have for them, Bertie. What's that, money? Yeah, four new $10 bills. You'll take care of moving that tree they're worried about. Yes, sir. You donating that, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, Mr. Bullard is. Mr. Bullard? Yeah, it's Mr. Bullard's money. It was my idea. Just doing it to help Marjorie and Bronco. Pretty clever the way I worked it out, too, Bertie. Yes, sir. How did you work it? Well, he didn't like the old leaves blowing on his property, and he said it obstructed his view. It was worth $40 to him to get rid of the tree. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Gilsey, you're a regular magician. Well, I'll pull a little magic once in a while. Yeah, I've seen him pull rabbits out of hats, but I never saw him turn old leaves into new money. Well, I did it, Bertie. Yes, sir. That's because you're a magician. Now you see a tree over there, and now you don't. Because Mr. Gillsleeve can turn old leaves into new money. You bet. Mr. Gillsleeve, you know why you're a magician? Yes, baby. That's right, because you can turn old leaves into new money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess Houdini couldn't have done it any better. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Bronco, Marjorie. Well, there's a lot of hilarity out here in the kitchen. What are you cooking with, Bertie? Laughing gas? <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing because Mr. Gildersleeve said you're a fine magician. Oh? What'd he do? Go ahead and tell him, Mr. Houdini. Well, I have a happy solution to the tree problem. Oh, so do we, Mr. Gildersleeve. We can save the big tree after all. 
Uh-oh. You can save the tree? Uh-huh. Unky, we went back to the lot and decided we just couldn't part with it. Yeah, we found a plan in a magazine with the house built right around the tree. The house will be U-shaped, Unky. Isn't that clever? Yes, but children... Yeah, I thought you definitely decided to have the tree taken out. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, we wouldn't think of it now. Why, that tree's at least 150 years old. I'm beginning to feel older than that. <laughs> now, what was your idea about the tree, Unky? Uh, that was my idea. Well, speaking of trees, I have to go see a man about some leaves. <laughs> I'd like to keep the tree, too. This puts me in what you might call an embarrassing position. Marjorie and Bronco were so enthusiastic about the new plans, I couldn't tell them I sold their tree. Well, you just have to tell Bullard we've changed our plans. I'll return his money, so what can he say? I wonder what he will say. <laughs> yes, Gildersleeve? Hello, Mr. Bullard. About the tree. You're taking it out tomorrow? You, well, not exactly. When are you taking it out? You well, Mr. Bullard, the children have talked it over and decided... Gildersleeve, if you came over to wheedle more money out of me... You no, know, no, no, it isn't that at all. In fact, I came over to return your $40. Why? You well, we decided to keep the tree, so here's your money. Gildersleeve, I don't want the money. I want the tree taken out. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Bullard, but that's impossible. Gildersleeve, you made a bargain with me. You well, in a way, yes. We didn't sign any contract. You can't legally hold me. There's nothing in writing, Mr. Bullard. Gildersleeve, I wrote a check, didn't I? Well, yes, You but... cashed the check, didn't you? Yes, but... What did it say on the check? Well, payment in full for removal of tree. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> you, Mr. Bullard, it really isn't up to me. Actually, I don't have anything to do with that tree. It's Marjorie and Bronco's property. You see... So you sold property that doesn't belong to you. Well, I guess you might say I... I... Zeke. <laughs> now, Gildersleeve, you understand a little law, and unless you want to be sued on any one or all of several charges, you'll remove the tree. You are Mr. Bullard. You wouldn't sue me. Think of my good name. If you don't remove that tree by tomorrow night, you won't have a name. You'll just be a number. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> With my luck, it'll be 13. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Like creamy, rich, smooth frosting, luscious fudge, then here's wonderful news. Now you can make perfect frosting and fudge easily and quickly without cooking. How? You do it with Philadelphia brand cream cheese. In just a minute, I'll tell you how to get your free, that's right, free pamphlet with more than 20 easy recipes for making delicious fudge and frosting with Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Frosting you make with Philadelphia cream cheese is never grainy, never too soft, never too hard. It's wonderfully creamy rich because Philadelphia brand is made with lots of fine milk and thick cream. And Philadelphia cream cheese gives you frosting that's moist and fresh tasting because Philadelphia brand tastes fresh. It's guaranteed fresh by Kraft. And Philadelphia cream cheese helps keep your frosting fresh tasting longer. You'll be delighted with Philly frosting. And you'll be delighted with the fudge you can make with Philadelphia brand cream cheese, too. It's delicious, smooth fudge you make without cooking in just 15 minutes. And it always turns out perfectly. Of course... It's important that you use genuine Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Every silvery package of genuine Philadelphia brand is marked with a red Kraft K to help you pick the real thing at a glance. Remember, Philadelphia brand is made only by Kraft and guaranteed fresh. Now, to get your free pamphlet with more than 20 easy recipes for delicious Philly frosting and fudge, just write to Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G... Chicago 77, Illinois. That's Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G, Chicago 77, Illinois.
No matter how hard a man tries to do the right thing, there usually comes a time in his life when he has to see a lawyer. Guess who's on his way to see Judge Hooker. Yeah, hi, George. It's nice to have a friend when you're in trouble. Especially if your friend happens to be a good lawyer. Hello, Judge. Well, Gildy, come on in. What brings you to my office so early in the morning? Uh, Judge, I'm in trouble. Oh? Has the water commissioner been caught diluting the water? <laughs> <laughs> Judge, this is serious. Rumson Bullard is threatening to sue me. Well, I thought he'd find an excuse sometime. Sit down, Gilly, and tell me what happened. Uh, well, Margie and Bronco wanted to remove the big tree on their lot. But they didn't feel they could spare the money. I see. Rumson Bullard considered the tree a nuisance and gave me a check for $40 to get rid of it. Splendid. Yeah, that's what I thought. And then Marjorie and Bronco decided they'd keep the tree and build their house around it. Well, what's the problem? Naturally, you were too smart to cash the check. Hey. No, I wasn't. <laughs> Judge, don't look at me like that. Help me. Well, fortunately for you, Gildy, I know Mr. Bullard very well. In fact, he's a client of mine, too. I'll straighten out the whole thing over the phone. You mean I won't have to go to court? Just let me talk to Ronson. It isn't often a lawyer handles both sides of a case. <laughs> you right, George. I have to hand it to you, Judge. You know your legal onions. Shh. Hello, Ronson. This is Horace Hooker. Your good neighbor, Mr. Gildersleeve, has told me about your little misunderstanding. Yeah, a boy. I thought before either of you make a mountain out of a molehill, we'd better have a friendly chat. Good thing I came to the judge. What a smoothie. Naturally, there's no intent to do wrong on the part of anybody involved. After all, you're both practical, intelligent men. Listen to that. The judge should be on the Supreme Court. Now, Rumson, why don't you just leave everything to me? You bet. You want to find Chief Justice he'd make. What's that, Rumson? Well, I want to be fair with both parties. I had a feeling you'd see it that way. I'll so inform Mr. Gildersleeve. Goodbye, Rumson. Oh, Judge, it's a pleasure to sit back and watch a fine lawyer work. What did he say? Gildy, my client says if you don't have that tree out by the night, he'll come over and chop it down himself. Judge! <laughs> Not only that, he's instructed me to file a suit. Oh, Sorry, Gildy. When I need a lawyer, why do I come to an old gloat? <laughs> in pretty deep when a lawyer can't help me. I guess the only thing left to do is make a clean breast of it to Marjorie and Bronco. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. Marjorie and Bronco home? Yeah, they're upstairs. Have you told them yet about how you loused up the tree deal? Hey. <laughs> no. Dude, I'm going to do that right now. Good luck, Unc. Thank you, my boy. Yeah, actually, I'm making more of a problem of this than it really is. When I tell Marjorie Bronco that Bullard will sue me if the tree's taken out, they'll understand. Sure. Yesterday, they'd given up the idea of keeping it anyway, so it can't mean too much to them. Marjorie Bronco! Come in, uh, Thank you. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. You were just standing here at the window admiring our tree. You yeah. Well... Isn't it beautiful, Unky? Yes, it's nice. But if you could shrewdly persuade somebody to pay for having it removed, you could buy several young trees and spot them wherever you wanted them. Oh, no. No. We want this tree, and we want it right where it is. Well... <laughs> Look, Unky, you can count four bird nests. Yeah, but birds nest in young trees, too. Just think. Birds singing outside the nursery window. Yeah... A tree that may in summer wear A nest of robins in her hair Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, the birds will be back next spring, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, that tree stays. I wonder where this bird will be next spring. <laughs> you know, Marge, someday when the twins are old enough, I'm going to hang a swing from that big gnarled limb. You well... You're getting back to younger trees. I can just see the twins now, romping and rolling in its shade. 
And Unky, dozing in a big hammock. Me? Mr. Gildersleeve, that tree has become a part of our family. The twins, Marge and me, you and the tree. <laughs> yeah, hi, George. What a wonderful family. I'd never consent to having it taken out. No, sir. Neither would I. I'd go to jail first. <laughs> You uh, just missed the judge. Yeah, good. You'd have been happy to see him. He has good news. Is the old goat leaving town? No, oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. The town couldn't get along without a good lawyer like the judge. Peavy, Judge Hooker is a bum. I know. He felt so badly about you getting sued, he talked Mr. Boyd out of it. He did? Good old judge. What a fine fellow. <laughs> He said Mr. Bullard was glad to drop the charges. You? He preferred to come over this evening and chop down the tree himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'd do it, too. Hey, Peavy, I can't let that happen to the kids' tree. They don't even suspect it's about to happen. You don't care. Yeah, I tried, but I just couldn't bring myself to tell them. There must be some way I can stop Bullard. He must have a soft spot in his heart somewhere. Well, perhaps you should buy him a box of cigars with... Uh, his money. Peavy, I tried to give him his money back, but he wouldn't take it. It's sundown, he'll be over there, axe in hand. Well, when it comes to striking the actual blow, it's hard to chop down a fine old tree. I, I had to do it once, I know. You? You know, I felt pretty sentimental about that tree, too. I became smitten with a girl, so I carved our initials in the tree with two hearts entwined. Well, I guess we've all done that, Peavy. And when Mrs. Peavy and I got married, I, I cut down the tree. <laughs> Peavy, why didn't you and Mrs. Peavy leave it standing as a memorial? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, the initials on that tree weren't Mrs. Peavy's. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, it may have posed a problem for you, but it's easy for Buller to chop down this tree. He told me about Amy Sue and other girls he courted under it. But he has absolutely no sentiment about it. Well, he may not say so. But a man doesn't forget those things. Yeah, I don't know, Peavy. Time wears memories pretty thin. Look at you. You never think about that girl whose initials you carved on the tree. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> dark. It's been here quite a while when Bullard hadn't shown up. Say, maybe he's changed his mind. Sure, I'll bet that's it. He just wanted me to worry for a day or two. He isn't a bad fellow. He, he, his porch light just went out across the street. Here he comes with an axe. What an old meanie. Joseph, <laughs> that you? Yes, Mr. Bullard. Ooh, what a big axe. Gildersleeve, I see you aren't going to remove the tree, so I'll take care of it. Step back. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Bullard. Uh, I've waited. Now stand back. Mr. Bullard, you can't do this. Oh? I paid you to do the job, but if you won't, I will. I'll start right here. You wait. You don't chop from this side. The tree will fall right across my driveway. Good. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll have to haul it away. Please, Mr. Bullard, chop from the other side. Well... All right. You should. You chop right here where it says... Hey, what's this? Hmm? What are you looking at? It's a little dark. You can't quite make it out, but there's some carving here. Two hearts entwined. Oh, let me see that. I killed a sleeve. Look at this. Amy Sue loves Rumson? What do you know? After all these years. Little Amy Sue. You're cute. I didn't know she cared so much. Gildersleeve, I probably broke her heart. Well, I can imagine. I was the town's Don Juan, a handsome lad. <laughs> well, 
Let's look around. Maybe we can find some more broken hearts. Here, Donnie, Mr. Bullard. Hmm? It's getting dark. We'd better chop down the tree. Here, give me the axe. Gildersleeve, don't you touch this tree. Well, I thought you wanted to cut it down. I'll sue the man who harms one twig of this forest friend. <laughs> yeah, you better take your money back then. Here's your $40. What? Oh, that. Thank you, Gildersleeve. Amy Sue loves rum. Let me look at that again. Yeah, he... Hey, this carving looks a little fresh. He does? Wait a minute. Aren't these new chips at the bottom of the tree? You well. Hey, yes, Leroy. Have you finished with my jackknife? <laughs> Open the door, Leroy. I'm coming home. The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Now you can enjoy two wonderful new versions of famous Philadelphia brand cream cheese. There's Philadelphia brand filled with tangy bits of fresh chives and Philadelphia brand with bits of red pimento all through it. With these two new kinds of fresh-tasting Philadelphia brand cream cheese, you'll fix tempting, delicious snacks and sandwiches more easily than ever. To get genuine Philadelphia brand, be sure you see the red Kraft K on the silvery package. Remember, there's only one Philadelphia brand, and it's made and guaranteed fresh by Kraft. Look here, Marge. You see where Unc carved on the tree? Oh, that was an awful thing to do to Mr. Buller, Donkey. Yeah, I just outsmarted him, that's all. After all, there was a life at stake. The life of this spreading oak. Been waiting here 150 years for you and Bronco... To build your little home under his protecting branches. That's right, Unky. Marge. Yes? I thought Mr. Gildersleeve said they couldn't find any more carving on the tree. Is this? I guess they didn't look very carefully. Look here, Uncle Mort. Mm, two hearts entwined. Bronco loves Marjorie. Oh, Bronco. Oh, brother. <laughs> Good night, folks. Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Crenna, Gail Gordon, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Question, what's the best way to raid an icebox? The answer, with Kraft's prepared mustard, of course. Because when you add a little Kraft mustard to the sandwich you make, you add a lot of tang. And here's something for you professional icebox raiders to remember. There are two kinds of Kraft mustard. Salad mustard with that delicately spiced, mild flavor. Ah, and then there's Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both kinds on hand. Then you won't meet up with a dish, but what you'll have just the mustard to add a lot of tang. Buy Kraft's prepared mustard. Groucho Marx, you bet your life he's next on NBC.